Events begin in a huge estate. The maid turned to her mistress with a request to write her name on the paper and sign the document. She asked Manager Wendell if His Highness would visit them. The man refused, explaining this by the fact that His Highness spends most of his time within the palace. Only if external treatment is not required due to burns throughout the body, the maid explained to her mistress that she would not be able to meet His Highness today. The girl asked if she could hear her. She talked to her like she was a four-year-old child. Her name was Betty, and she was Abella's maid from the Duchy of Delure. She is currently performing a play. If you ask why, you will understand as events unfold. Because everyone in this room thinks Abella is stupid. And they were right. Literally three days ago. The girl spoke only a few words from her entire vocabulary. Dad, Abella, Betty, food. Abella was a mentally retarded girl who only knew these four words. And literally three days ago, she was not yet there. It all started with a terrifying nightmare. It began with a young, wealthy mathematics teacher, famous in the most prestigious academic town in the country. Her name was Siokion, and it was her. In this dream, she was working late to do some research, so she had to catch a taxi to get home. And then, something terrible happened. A truck flew into it. She didn't even have time to dodge or scream. It happened in the blink of an eye. The truck crashed into her, and every bone exploded with pain. The girl could not understand where she was. Is she really in the hospital? What kind of place was this? She had a really bad headache, and it wasn't a dream. The girl was hit. The maid approached Abella. She noticed that Abella was pulling her hair out again, which was not the first time, but yesterday she combed her hair so well. Betty asked if she liked it, but the girl smiled and thought who the maid was. Betty said that she could give her a mirror. After all, she needs to comb it again. Abella couldn't understand why she was doing this. Looking in the mirror, the lady got scared. The maid claimed it was her, Lady Abella, daughter of the Grand Duke. Then Betty looked at the girl in fear. Was her mistress really talking now? Abella asked not to frighten her with such questions. Betty began to rub her consciousness. The lady asked her not to die. She can't do it. After all, she is the only one here who should faint from shock. The girl asked if she had a smartphone. After all, she needs to call her family. She began to shake the maid so that she would wake up quickly. And finally, Betty opened her eyes. Abella exclaimed that the maid was acting as if she had seen a ghost in front of her. Betty asked again if her mistress was talking. The girl could not understand why she was asking the same question. It's a bit strange. The maid began to explain to the girl that until yesterday, she could only say four words. She had some developmental disabilities. She knew other words, but only used four. Betty's first word is her name, if anything. The girl explained that she was her maid. Another word is dad, that is, her father, the duke. Abella was surprised that she had a maid, and she asked me to continue. Betty continued to say that she also spoke to Abella. That's her name. And her full name is Abella Bliss O. Delure. And at the moment, she is 24 years old. The girl could not understand what was wrong with her maid. Looks like she's about to cry. Betty, you ran to the girl and began to hug her. She exclaimed that heaven had helped her. She couldn't believe Abella spoke so well. She was so afraid that the girl would enter the imperial family and that the prince's entourage would mock her and manipulate her all her life. Abella immediately pulled away from the maid and asked who was getting married. Betty explained, then her mistress. The girl asked when her wedding would be. Betty stood up to remember that it would be held in three days. Abella thought that this was completely pointless. She had an accident and then woke up in someone else's body in an unknown location. And what's even worse is the body of a 24-year-old fool. And now she must put on such a performance that people will not notice the substitution. And the cherry on the cake she has to marry a complete stranger covered in burns. In the name of the guardian dragon of the empire, the white dragon Kieslan, they are solemnly asked to witness the marriage. Everyone began to congratulate my lady. Abella decided that this was some kind of madhouse. Betty approached her. The lady thought that all this would drive her crazy. The maid explained to the girl that it was time for her to go to her room. She asked her to stand up. Abella thought that she couldn't stand it and she needed to run away. Betty asked her to slow down a little, but the girl wanted to get out of this place as soon as possible. She decided that this was not marriage. This looks like a real kidnapping. The maid began to run after her. 
The lady asked not to approach her. Betty began to explain that she shouldn't run like that. It's bad for her heart. Indeed, the girl was already hurting. The maid exclaimed that it was all her fault. It had to always be there and not leave her even a step. Betty hugged Abella again, and she promised that from now on she would not take her eyes off her for a second. The girls measured their blood pressure and pulse. The doctor asked if she knew what year it was, and he called her poor thing. This is the 25th year of the empire and 2,345 according to the calendar. Betty explained to Abella that she had already told her about this. The doctor said she seemed fine, except for her sore knees. With good nutrition and sleep, she will recover quickly. The maid, looking sternly at her mistress, exclaimed when the doctor left that she had already told her about this and the girl should have remembered. She repeats this to her one last time. And she asked me to try not to forget it this time. When people say empire, they mean the Kaislin Empire. When they say duchy, they mean the duchy of Delure. And that's where they come from. Once upon a time, the duchy was not part of the empire, but several centuries ago, the emperor recognized the heroism of the Archduke of Delure in one of the battles and handed him power on the island of Delure. It was at this point that Delure received the status of a dukedom. At that time, the empire was in poverty due to territorial expansion. Therefore, the duchy separated from the empire and declared independence. The duchy soon began to prosper thanks to maritime trade and related industries. However, the empire wanted to get the duchy back. During the reign of the last war of the current emperors, the Kaislin Empire managed to annex many territories, and after the empire recovered from its disastrous past, it began attempts to return the gifted lands. And the Duchy of Delure is no exception. Apparently, the empire wants the duchy back, especially when Delure's economy is at its peak. The empire tried to impose various sanctions on them, demanding that they join it. For example, the empire unexpectedly deprived them of a good trading partner with whom the duchy had been cooperating for many years, or prevents the establishment of diplomatic relations with other states. Since the duchy is dependent on trade, this makes life much more difficult for them. And so, the empire offered to marry Abella to one of its princes. The lady asked if they were making fun of her. She thought she must be the archduke's beloved and precious daughter, and as a result, she did not have the ability to speak until yesterday. How could they send her to an empire where there would be no one to support her? Betty went on to explain that they didn't actually plan to accept the marriage proposal. The duchy simply wanted to buy time until they could find other solutions. The duchy sent a letter to the empire explaining her situation. At this point, they thought of what they could offer the empire in return. The duchy never really thought that the empire was serious about political marriage. But surprisingly, this is exactly what the empire wanted, and one of the imperial princes even volunteered to marry her. The lady sadly lowered her head and realized that that was all. Abella asked the maid if the duchy was trying to fool the empire, but he was outplayed. Betty replied that the lady was completely right. She meant that the duchy's position was clear. However, the behavior of the empire is very suspicious. Why would the prince of the empire voluntarily marry the daughter of a duke who suffers from mental retardation? And who is this prince anyway? Betty began to explain that his majesty was the eighth prince of the empire. Firstly, he lives in a remote part of the palace, and as she already knows, he has multiple burns all over his body. When he was little, a fire started in the palace where he lived with his mother. The noble husband died in the fire, but the eighth prince remained alive, with burns on his face. Abella thought he had become a monster. Seok Yon Kang is tired of reassuring herself. She simply had to remain calm. She must find a way to solve this problem. More precisely, a way to escape from here. If she was going to stay on this estate just to be passed around like an object, then she would really be doing Abella a favor by running away from here. This is what Seok Yon Kang thought to do in the body of a girl. She has nothing personal against the eighth prince, who has severe burns and a disability. But why is his body so beautiful? He wears some kind of magical bandages that make his body so beautiful. And his skin is not burned. In fact, it is light and very clean. The boy extended his hand to the girl, pronouncing her name. Calling her his wife, he clung to Abella's sweet lips. She took the guy by the hand, and she couldn't understand why he didn't have burns. He doesn't even have a hump. He explained to the girl that his name is Felicious. The guy said that he heard that she could understand words, despite her intellectual limitations. She needs to remember his name well. 
he will repeat it to her over and over again. Felicius told the girl that he was in such shock when he first heard what happened to her that he could hardly eat. Taking the girl by the hand, he continued to say that now he brought her here so that nothing else would happen to her. Felicius kissed his mistress's hand, and he exclaimed that she might feel like he was taking advantage of her, but she won't regret it. Abella thought about how the boy meant to use this. He thinks that he cannot ask her to remember, or rather, he knows that this is too difficult a request. But this would be the only happy memory of his life. The boy exclaimed, saying her name again, that the girl saved him. Abella couldn't understand what he was even talking about. Had they really met before? The girl fell asleep, and he, stroking her hair, called Abella his poor innocence as a savior. If she couldn't remember, then he would hold on to those memories for the two of them. Felicius vowed to protect her from this horror. Abella thought about how she had to deal with so many troubles at once. He makes her worry. As she had promised Duke de Lure, she lay down without resistance. So it's unlikely that he thinks that everything is fine in her head. It smells very tasty, and her body is very cottony. The girls wanted to sleep. Felicius repeated, looking at her, that he would protect her and her whole life, no matter what happened to her. The boy lay down next to the girl, stroking her silky golden hair. She remembered being told to pretend to be sick. Act like she's really sick. Then they won't touch her. Her teacher leaves her alone if she pretends to be sick. True. Then she forces her to study twice as much. Even when her father scolds the servants, he is not angry with those who are sick. Instead, he gets angry at the butler for training the servant this way. Abella told the boy that knowing this, he should also pretend to be sick. Suddenly, the girl jumped up and sat down in bed. It was a dream. She wondered how long she had been asleep. Where is Felicius now? Abella began to call her maid. Betty immediately came into the room and asked if she was okay. Has she seen his highness? Are his burns really terrible? What was he like? Is he really hunchbacked and what did he say to her? Betty asked the girl a bunch of questions. She asked how their first night went. Was it terrible or good? Abella replied that there was nothing. Nothing should have happened. She simply fell asleep. And he thinks that he also fell asleep and then just quietly left. And she's not making this up. Betty said that she was glad that my lady could scream. All night she was terribly worried that something would happen. She asked if her name was Abella. The girl replied that she did not do this. Betty said that apparently they should go down for breakfast and asked her to get ready. After they went down to breakfast, the maid lowered her head. Betty realized that they were ruined. The prince's housekeeper said that boiled potatoes were all the food they had. Abella sadly asked why there was famine in the country. Betty exclaimed that she had been told that the palace sent provisions once a week but they often ignore some items on the list and only send spoiled products. They said that they were the only ones in the entire palace who were treated this way. This is ridiculous. It seems like he is the prince of the empire. They are in the middle of the palace. How dare they treat the prince like this? The prince was hardly recognized by his majesty, and his condition requires daily medical care. And Charlotte, the imperial consort, took over control of the palace after the empress fell ill. But the problem is that she despises the eighth prince. Now they even have a faction opposing the prince, which was great for them, and so does the lady, whose power is second only to this, which really causes suffocation and nausea. Supplies were brought to them yesterday. Well, that's all they have. Betty just didn't know what to do. They must starve to death right in the palace. Abella asked the maid to calm down. Even though they sent her here against her will, she is still the daughter of the archduke she must also have something valuable. Betty thought about it. There is a need to consider what can help them thrive and resist the treatment they are seeing now. They also have a trust fund. A trust fund gives the right to transfer property that originally belonged to the founder to the disposal of the person specified in the agreement. Abella thought there was something called a trust fund. Bella had heard that her late mother, the Archduchess, had opened an escrow account in her name when she was born. Abella was delighted. The maid explained that there should be enough funds there. She needs to check the trust fund. They must hurry. She heard that Madame's late mother, the Archduchess, opened a trust account in her name when she was born. There must be enough funds there. She needs to check the trust account, and they must hurry as soon as possible. The girl wondered if there were really enough funds there. How much money can there be there? Betty exclaimed that she could not know. Abella asked what she needed to do to request a trust account. 
the maid see that the late Archduchess had entrusted her fortune to the foundation. However, she was from the United Kingdoms of Cothona in the south, and not from the Duchy of Delure. Abella asked Betty to get down to business, and she asked how she could claim her rights in this regard. Betty heard that the Archduchess assigned the remedy exclusively to her name. Even the Archduke himself cannot claim any rights in this regard. Therefore, he planned to have them as her confidant after she came of age. The lady asked if it turns out that in order for the trust account to become available to her, she only needs to be of legal age. Betty confirmed that he became available to her when she turned 20. Abella exclaimed that the money must have already been taken. If Betty said she was already 24 years old, the maid asked the girl to eat first. I didn't have to choose, since there wasn't much choice, but there was what I had. Betty said that in any case, she had never seen anyone take her signature for a power of attorney in all the years that she had been serving her mistress. If the trust fund actually existed, it would help lift them out of poverty and prepare them for the future. But the money must have been entrusted to the Delure Bank, and to get there, you need to leave here. She's kind of a hostage and a fool. And if she tries to ask for money a few days after her marriage, they will notice something fishy here. Then Betty suddenly laughed. She asked to forgive her. She tried to hold it in, but it didn't work. The maid clutched her stomach and suddenly became sad. Abella asked if she had eaten today. Betty explained that she had not eaten since yesterday. The lady asked the girl to sit down. Betty was very surprised that she would not finish everything. Abella exclaimed that she was already quite full and thought that now was the time for a walk. Betty asked where she would go. The girl asked her not to worry. She was not going to leave the estate. The lady asked her maid if she had been to the Kaislin Empire when she was little. Betty replied that she did not remember this. Abella asked how long she had been working for her family. The maid explained that she had been working next to her for 14 years. The lady said that Felicia spoke as if they had already met before. Then that means they could have seen each other before she was eight years old. Around this time, her condition began to deteriorate, and this may be true. Betty heard that she was a very smart child before she was eight. However, she was never sick or had any accidents. It happened unexpectedly. The lady asked if all this happened when she was eight years old. Betty replied that it was so. Why was she asking about it? Abella replied that she was just interested and wished the maid a bon appetit. Then the girl Sokyung thought that heaven had helped her to enter the university. Her mother believed she overcame her mental retardation because her prayers were answered. That's how it was. She really was behind in her development. When she was little, she attended a special school because she could not go to others. Her speech was slow. It also took her a long time to react to anything. As for calculations, she could not solve elementary expressions. However, for some reason, her developmental delay suddenly stopped. She became like this when she was 10 years old. Interestingly, intelligence tests showed that her memory abilities were much higher than those of others. It was as if she had suddenly awakened her powers. It was some kind of miracle. Abella is said to have been quite intelligent until she was eight years old. For her, it was the other way around. She had low intelligence until the age of 10. How strange it all is. Apparently this cannot be a mere coincidence. Abella walked up to a door and glanced at it. She couldn't figure out where it ended up. The girl realized that she was on the fourth floor. She was so busy with her thoughts that she didn't even understand how she ended up here. Well, why, the furniture in this part of the estate is different from the rest. This door is probably locked. Abella began to pull the handle. When she opened the door, she was very surprised. What does this all mean? Everything in this room was so elegant. You could even have parties there. Maybe she needs to take a little break. The girl walked up to some curtain and again decided that it wouldn't be a big deal if she looked. She removed the curtain and saw a painted lady in front of her. Abella asked who this woman was. Her thoughts were interrupted by the boy's voice. It was Felicious. He exclaimed apologetically that he didn't mean to scare her, and he explained that he had come specifically for her. There were things he wanted to tell Betty about her, but he didn't think he'd find Abella here. The girl tried to calm down and keep her face. The boy immediately approached her and asked if she would mind if he kissed her. The boy pressed his lips to hers and took the girl in his arms. He said that he knew that she might be uncomfortable, but asked her to be patient. He would like to tell her about this estate before lunch, but doing it this way will be easier. He regrets that he could not come to her lately. He knows he should come here more often, 
he is completely fine and knows that she would ask him not to take revenge. But he'll make sure Charlotte doesn't get away with it this time. He promised to visit her again soon. The next day, a lot of food appeared on the table in front of Betty and Abella. Betty couldn't believe they had such good products. They were very surprised by this. Felicia said that, apparently, the fact that he is not a man with burns, as rumors say, does not impress Betty as much as the fact that she can feed her mistress. This is devotion. The maid looked at the boy and exclaimed that this was actually not the case. She was truly surprised when she saw his highness. But he noticed that she didn't look surprised at all. Felicius apologized for the terrible breakfast. Products arrived later than expected. But from now on they will be more prepared. Betty said that Judy said that they were not receiving any support or supplies from the palace. His Highness replied that she was right. They really don't receive any help from the Imperial Palace. I'm sure Judy didn't say anything about them at all. She's one of the people who's been working here since he was born, and she never spills the beans unless he allows her to. The fact is that they independently carry out deliveries in the district. And now they will begin to supply what Betty and his wife need. So, if there is something Abella needs, she should just tell Judy about it, no matter how much it costs. He will also start paying the maids a full salary. He wants them to know that the estate is abandoned on purpose to avoid drawing attention to themselves, not because they are poor. Betty exclaimed, who was she to listen to such important information? She's just a maid and not even from here. She is just a serving lady's maid. Felicius replied that the peerage was too high for such a low position. If she thought he wouldn't know who she was, she was wrong. She is Bethany Fielda Dialia, daughter of Count Dialia. Abella immediately turned her head to the girl, very surprised by what the guy just said. Archduke de Lure personally told him about it. He also knows that Betty is a capable escort who pays special attention to etiquette and behavior, whose peerage is much higher than that required for the position. Betty exclaimed that she had no idea that his lordship had told him about such. Felicius explained that his relationship with the duke was strictly confidential. He was also told that the emperor had intervened to prevent other maids and visitors from Delure from coming here, and all his wife's jewelry was taken away when she crossed the threshold of the palace. He guesses who took them. This must be Lentia, a greedy person like their mother. They have already received much more than they deserve. What else do they want? Felicius explained that this was why the archduke told him to be extremely careful with those around Abella, and he promised him that both Abella and her maid would be completely safe. He asked permission to make a modest request. You need to trust him because he's not on the emperor's side. Protecting his wife is not just Betty's responsibility. After all this, the maid bathed her mistress. She wondered if the water was warm, but Abella ignored this question. She was angry with the girl and asked how she could hide this from her. She had no idea that Betty had peerage. Also, the daughter of a duke. The girl again asked my lady's forgiveness. After all, she should have said it, but she didn't want to appear in front of her like this. When the girl asked why, Betty explained that it was only because she decided to serve her simply for the girl's kindness. She gained a lot after joining her service. She never had to be strict with her or suppress herself while she was around. She enjoys the fact that she doesn't have to perform the duties of an aristocrat. Abella always made her feel comfortable being around her, and even when her speech returned to her, the lady exclaimed that these are a very good friend. Taking her hands, she explained that she couldn't even imagine what she had been through. But now she promises her to listen to her more often. After Abella's words, Betty began to cry. She explained to the girl that she just got foam in her eyes. The maid asked me to call and ask the girl about something. Abella began to listen carefully. Betty said that the lady spoke of being alone with His Highness before dinner. She wondered what they were doing there. Abella began to say that it was just wonderful. He took her in his arms and circled her around the green sunny meadow. It was wonderful to listen to the stories in his hands. He said that they deliberately chose old furniture for this house so that nothing would attract attention. He also told her about his childhood. Betty asked if he had been holding her all this time. How romantic it is. Abella said that to be honest, it was quite difficult. Playing dumb is a lot harder than it might seem. Betty was still jealous of her. The lady remembered Lentia. Felicius got angry when he mentioned that name last time. Betty noticed this too. Abella said that she thought something else made him angry, not just the way she treated her as a child, as if there was some special hostility between them. Betty replied that she didn't know much about it. 
I wonder if it has something to do with the words he said at the painting. Abella thought that maybe Lentia had something to do with Charlotte. Betty suggested that the girl talk about more pleasant things while taking a bath. Such talk is bad for the mistress's skin. Here the maid clasped her hands and exclaimed that it turns out they went together to the garden behind the house and to the greenhouse. Abella asked if that was the case here, and she asked Betty to tell her in more detail about this. The maid was upset, realizing that she had not been there yet, and she suggested that she try to leave tomorrow through the back door on the first floor. As soon as she goes outside, she will come across more doors, and when she opens them, she will see a fairy tale in front of her. The girl was already admiring the beauty of this garden. What a fresh and sweet scent! She thought Prince Felice's estate was a haunted house. But if you look at this greenhouse, you can be amazed. They even have watermelons. This is probably what Felicius meant by an independent supply of food. Abella commented that this garden was simply incredible. It's extraordinarily beautiful here. She didn't even know there was a secret garden here. The lady saw in front of her a whole set for tea drinking. Next to the many cakes and pastries, there was a still warm kettle. The girl became curious how he knew that she would be here. The more she gets to know Felicia, the better he seems to her. The girl thought that he was too kind to her. I wonder why. Why is he so nice to a girl who is nothing more than a silly girl? Then Betty interrupted her thoughts. She called her loudly. Abella said that the maid scared her very much. The girl immediately apologized to the lady. But she began to explain that she had more frightening news. An invitation out of the blue. For what reason could this be? Tea drinking. Betty began to tell the lady that she should attend a tea party in the Imperial Palace. The man said that Her Highness sent him. It was the Emperor's wife Charlotte who presented her with the invitation. Abella replied that she would accept the invitation. But doesn't it seem strange to her that the invitation is for today? Betty exclaimed that this was absolutely ridiculous. How can you send an invitation every day? They've gone too far. They are clearly trying to give her a bad name. But the lady cannot miss the planned tea party. Abella said that in this case she simply would not go. She couldn't understand why this was so important. But Betty exclaimed that it was very important. All the ladies of the court will be there. All the ladies who are in a higher position than her are waiting for the mistress to greet them there, especially when everyone knows that she has mental retardation. She must be present. Otherwise, they will accuse her of all sorts of ridiculous things. Abella exclaimed that in this case we need to go quickly. She would have broken her companion's heart if she had not gone. But first, we need to make sure Felicius knows about this. And she suggested just telling Judy about it. Betty explained that His Highness Felicius left the estate today because he had some important business to attend to. They should do the same now. In addition, all their jewelry and gifts were taken from them. And these were all the precious jewelry that they brought from the duchy. Abella said that in this case she would simply go without them. Betty exclaimed that this was nonsense. Everyone who is there will be a member of the imperial family. They will all be dressed to the nines. The lady asked, In this case, how about she decorate herself with flowers? After they finished preparing, the main palace had already risen in front of them. Griffin Hall, yes, we noticed that Abella is already here. Betty exclaimed that this was a garden party. The invitation said nothing about the event being outdoors. The lady replied that it did not matter. The weather is wonderful. Betty explained that such parties are usually held in the shade. Abella asked who the lady in the center was. The maid replied that it was Her Highness the Empress, and she added that to the left of the Empress is Her Highness Kila, and to her right there was a more interesting person. Her Imperial Highness Charlotte was holding a cup in her hands, looking with an evil gaze. Betty advised the lady to first prepare for this meeting. Abella exclaimed that she was making her worry even more. The girl asked the maid who the two ladies were who were sitting at the farthest table on the right. The girl explained to the lady that this was Princess Lenthia and Princess Consort Shara. Abella asked Betty if she could see their jewelry. They're just lovely. The maid told the girl that she thought these decorations were mistresses. The girl was told that she was late. The princess was the consort of the eighth prince. She couldn't understand how late she was when the invitation clearly stated that she should arrive at two o'clock. Betty immediately bowed to Her Imperial Highness and asked for forgiveness. After all, it's all her fault. The Empress thought that perhaps it was the hostess, Lady Charlotte, who had told her the wrong time. Charlotte immediately became angry. 
and asked Lady Jill if she was implying that their tea party was not ideal. The girl replied that she thought so. The Empress exclaimed that she had gone too far. She made every effort to prepare this tea party after Her Majesty the Empress herself gave her the right to receive guests. Is she really reproaching her because of this stupid girl? Abella heard this and quietly expressed indignation in her direction. The woman said that there was no point in blaming her. Being late will not affect the first impression in any way, after all. There may have been a misunderstanding. Now let her take her place. Betty thanked Her Imperial Majesty. Abella was very angry. Everyone was whispering behind her back, discussing her. They planted it directly opposite the sun. This is the attitude towards her. Women specifically exposed their jewelry to the sun to reflect the ray on it. It was very mean and ugly on their part. They asked each other if Lady Lenthea had heard the scream. The girl answered Shara that she had heard. Apparently, this is one of the squirrels in the garden. The second said that this was clearly not a person. After all, a person could not make such a sound, unless of course he is a fool. Abella could barely tolerate their bullying, but she decided to simply ignore them. It used to be said that a married prince would be a candidate for the throne. But now that the burned monster has married a fool like her, the rumors will subside. Then it's interesting which of the princes will also inherit the throne. But princes can only marry by order of His Majesty the Emperor. But lately, His Majesty has not given permission for marriage. This woman seems to think that Lady Charlotte is behind the death of the Crown Prince. But how can she make such conclusions without evidence? That's what these ladies were talking about. The girl told Lady Charlotte that she should not talk about such things here. But the lady replied that there was nothing to worry about. She is still a fool who has difficulty understanding their conversation. And she asked me to just look at her face. What kind of flower did she smear on him? How pale she is, and what a mess her head is. Then the woman with the fan rang the bell. She said it was time to change dishes. And she suggested stretching their legs and taking a walk in the garden. One of the girls asked if they would feel better if they looked at the charming flowers. Charlotte replied that it would just be a relief. She was tired of looking at Abella's face. Betty told the lady that she should go too. The girl laughed and thought that this was just childish on their part. Still, it's not so bad to make a fool of yourself. No one watches their words in front of her. Well, the crown prince is dead, and no one knows who killed him. But the crown prince's wife suspects Charlotte of this. After the crown prince died, people began to speculate that the married prince would be the next in line to succeed him, because most joyful events such as marriages were either canceled or postponed after funerals. Well, this means that the funeral has already ended and the prince was killed quite a long time ago. Abella thinks he died a year or two ago. But did Lady Charlotte really kill the crown prince? Folding her arms across her chest, Abella thought that something was fishy here. The lady asked Betty why she looked so depressed and what happened to her. Betty replied that she was just upset. The necklace on the wife of the third prince is a gift that His Grace the Archduke gave to Abella, hoping for a speedy recovery and the diamond pendant worn by the fourth princess. It is a family heirloom that the Duchess gave to Madame. According to rumors, Lady Charlotte designated her jewelry as a tribute to the empire and distributed it to members of the imperial family. Abella clenched her fists. But Betty said that they could not do anything about their bullying since they are like that on their own. The lady was angry. After all, it's disappointing to flaunt her own jewelry so openly, just to see a reaction. The ladies, looking at Abella from the side, could not believe that this girl once had such necklaces. After all, her husband is the monster hiding behind the mask, and she herself is a fool who has nothing but a pretty face. Abella clenched her fists, trying to calm down and not explode. Charlotte exclaimed, as if she had been told that the duchy was very rich. Who cares anyway as long as they get what they want? In addition, these jewels simply found more suitable owners. Betty ran up to the mistress and asked if everything was okay with her. Abella asked her to go to the carriage and say that they were returning soon. She wants to do something. Therefore, he asks her to go as far as possible from here. The mistress raised her hands up and exclaimed that it was all hers. This is it for Abella. Everyone instantly turned towards the girl. She knocked over the tablecloth with food on the ladies' dresses. Charlotte screamed at her. How she doesn't understand what she's doing now. Is she even sane? Abella seriously angered the girls. They shouted at the girl, asking if she wasn't ashamed. Does she even understand where she is? 
They asked the girl to get out of here. How dare it even look at them like that? Hearing the screams, the empress approached them. She asked what the commotion was all about. Abella pulled the girl's hair. They asked to be released. The empress asked the guards to tear this girl away from them right now. The woman with a fan in her hands asked not to do this. We need to wait until she calms down on her own. Let it not work right away. The angry woman asked why they were talking to her while her daughter and daughter-in-law were dying. Broken dishes have great value. Is it really over? Then Her Highness the Third Princess was approached by a maid. She asked her if she did something wrong. The girl replied that she was doing everything right. The maid said that she had prepared a bath for her with oils, thyme, and lemon in her room, as she had requested. Does she need anything else? The girl replied that it was necessary. She wants to be alone while she takes a bath. Therefore, he asked to tell everyone in the palace to leave the third floor. After the maid left, the girl opened some kind of box and said hello to Felice. He asked Ait den Kaislin if the tea party was over. And like that girl, the third princess said that he was asking the wrong questions. He asks how she is doing. It's better to ask how she behaved. He asked what she meant. The girl explained that Abella grabbed and shook Lady Lenthia and Charlotte by the hair. It was such a commotion, and no one even intervened until this fight was over. She doesn't know why, but the Empress ordered no one to interfere. The maid explained that his wife, Abella, was smiling from ear to ear, and he can't even imagine how frightening she looked. He asked what happened to her next. The girl exclaimed what he thought. Of course, the royal guards kicked her out. She thought for a long time whether she should intervene or not. But then she remembered that he asked her to keep an eye on her behavior. Then she exclaimed whether her boyfriend was even listening to her. It wasn't Abella's hair that was pulled out and Abella tore them out to others. The guy was worried that their hair decorations might hurt her hands while she was pulling their hair. He asked where the girl was now. They don't know about the blue room in the Imperial Palace. Betty exclaimed, looking at the girl. What was she even thinking about? She should have been slow. Not crazy like she showed herself to be. Just slow. She could only speak four words, but she was such a kind soul. She smiled like an angel. And she never pulled people's hair, laughing like a maniac. Abella exclaimed that Betty said pulling the hair or even pulling it out. The maid began to explain that she had to do this only with her hair and not with theirs. Abella said that she already understood everything. Enough talking about hair. She asked the girl to look at this room. Everything in it is blue. And I asked what kind of place this was. Betty told the lady that this was the blue room. And why is she still laughing? Doesn't he understand how serious this is? She really found it very funny that the room was called Blue. Apparently, whoever came up with this name was very lazy. Betty asked if she even understood what it meant to be locked in this room. Nobles who have committed a crime are temporarily locked in the blue, red, or green rooms. I usually reserve red for the worst criminals. Abella asked what she did. She was just pulling out some hair. And is this a serious crime? Betty replied that the problem was that she had pulled out the hair of the Imperial Princess and the Princess Consort. They claimed they felt their lives were being threatened, and now they are accusing her of attempted murder. Abella was very surprised. Betty said that it was a serious crime to kill a member of the Imperial family or associates dealing with them. Most of the nobles locked in the Blue Room were awaiting execution. Now, does she understand the seriousness of the situation? Abella listened to Betty very carefully. Then some guys with weapons approached them and asked if Her Highness was ready. She couldn't understand who these people were. Betty explained that the lady told her to go to the carriage and report their imminent departure. She exclaimed that she shouldn't have listened to her. Abella wondered what was wrong with their legal system. Betty said that she would never have left her alone if she had known what would happen. It's all her fault. The girl asked if they were really going to kill her for pulling these two by the hair. The third princess told Felice that the death penalty was certainly possible since Abella was accused of a criminal offense. The reason for the action does not matter. After all, she had hurt a member of the Imperial family. To make matters worse, Lentia and Lyra claimed that their lives were under threat. It won't be easy to get her released any time soon. The guy asked what about the trial. She thinks it will happen. Imperial law requires that the entire Imperial family be present when one of its members is sentenced. Felicius replied that he knew about it. This is called summary judgment. The girl said that it is headed by the emperor and a secret vote is held, 
in which only members of the imperial family participate. In addition, the judge has the right to express his opinion, but does not have the right to vote. The boy said that in Abella's case the empress would be the judge, so she wouldn't be able to vote. The third princess exclaimed that the imperial family currently included the Kiesler family, consisting of eight princes and three princesses. That is only eleven people. The first princess left the imperial palace after her marriage, but will most likely return for her trial. Felicius asked when the trial would be held. The girl replied that she had no idea, but it was necessary for everyone to be assembled. If they cannot gather everyone, then the trial will take place only after they have collected powers of attorney from those who will be absent. Charlotte wants to resolve everything as quickly as possible. This is exactly what worries her. Who knows what Charlotte is up to this time? The boy asked if she was going to kill her, but Abella can easily get into trouble. Felicius promised to do everything to allow this to happen. The girl wanted to know what exactly he meant. What is he going to do? And she asked me to tell her about it. But he disappeared without saying anything. Meanwhile, Betty was telling her mistress that she should stock up on food while there was still some. Who knows what might happen? Abella exclaimed that she couldn't. The feeling that her stomach is about to burst and she will die from overeating. The girl explained that she could no longer eat. Betty asked the lady not to joke about death. She can't imagine how scared she was at that moment. The thought that they might harm her. Abella told Betty that she was so nervous about all these death sentences and scared her. She added that she knew that Betty did not want to do this. She was just joking. Was she really upset because of her words? Abella asked the girl not to be offended by her. Betty said that this was not the case at all. But she doesn't think it's all right. She can no longer have lunch with her. From now on she will eat in her cell. The lady began to worry and asked why. Or she doesn't like being with her. Betty explained that she really enjoyed having lunch with her. Well, this goes against all rules of decency. Abella exclaimed that she was not yet used to this place. What other rules of decency could there be? She doesn't want to have lunch alone. The girl asked to talk about etiquette later, and she asked Betty what she was holding in her hands. She scolded all the foods with this spoon before eating. Betty explained that this spoon is an artifact that makes it clear whether there is poison in the food. This is the mistress's spoon. She has been using it since the girl first entered His Highness's estate. Abella didn't even know they had something like that. Betty said that since they had finished eating, she would order a bath before it was too late, after which the maid called another maid and asked her to prepare the bath. It would be great to add some saffron and rose oil to it. Could she ask her to do just that? The girl immediately agreed and said that she would let me know when everything was ready. Betty told the lady that all the bath accessories that she had in Delure were here. She thinks they can use them. Abella thanked the maid. Betty exclaimed that after her bath she would return to the Red Palace, so she will have to sleep alone. The girls had no choice but to agree with this. Betty took her hand and asked her not to give up, but to believe only in the best. She, in turn, will do everything in her power. Abella replied that she was already doing everything possible. The maid meant something completely different. She asked the girl to believe in the duchy. Does she really think that the duchy does not know about her arrest? Betty thinks they already know. And I need a report from a maid like her to keep me informed of what's going on. She is sure the duke will do everything possible to help Abella. This is how Betty reassured her mistress. The girl said that she was powerless and had nothing. But one thing she is sure of is that they are not alone. Betty does everything for you so that she knows about what is happening around her. But this is not enough at all, because she's in Delure, but they are now in the very heart of the Empire, and some information is missing. All she needs is someone on her side who can relay information to her. She needs someone who knows as much as possible about the Empire, someone friendly to her and someone who is unlikely to deceive her, someone who could take her side if anything bad happened. If you think about it, such a person probably exists. Felicia, he is her husband. He convinced the girl with all kinds of sweet speeches saying that he would do whatever she asked. But it's already one in the morning. She's stuck in the cell, and he still hasn't shown up. He has nothing, and he cannot even protect her wealth. And now he's not even trying to get her out of here. He's so suspicious. And why is he the only one hiding his beautiful body and face? If it weren't for his stunning appearance. The girl thought that it was not just his appearance. If his voice weren't so beautiful, she would. But Abella didn't have time to finish. She said out loud, 
Wondering why he heard that voice in front of her, the boy heard what she said. Or perhaps he imagined it. He asked if she could talk. Did she just say that? Abella was wondering whether to tell him or not. Maybe it's better to pretend nothing happened. The lady finally decided to tell him honestly. Turning to Felicius, she exclaimed that she could actually speak. She understands perfectly well how he feels now. She felt the same way when she felt the smoothness of his skin. Therefore, she hopes that he will quickly recover from this shock. Because she has a few questions for him. Then Betty suddenly ran into Abella's room. She began to call her mistress. The girl asked what happened to her, and she asked to let her sleep some more. It's still too early for you. But Betty replied that she should be ready and asked her to get ready as soon as possible. Betty reported that a messenger from the emperor, another from the duchy, was waiting for her outside. She must prepare now. The maid asked the girl to hurry up, and I decided to start with hair. She combed it very roughly. Just let him look at this mess. She looked good before bed. What could have happened at night? Abella said that nothing serious happened. In general, she was treated very tenderly. The girl was glad to hear this from her mistress. She told Betty she started talking during the engagement, more precisely, when she signed the marriage contract. Then she suddenly regained consciousness. Abella explained that although her mind had returned, she still didn't remember anything. She wouldn't even know she was being stupid if Betty told me about it. Also, she doesn't remember anything at all from her childhood. The girl asked Felicius if he was okay. The boy replied that he was fine. We're just a little embarrassed, that's all. This may sound like an excuse, but he knows that they stole all her jewelry. When he realized that Charlotte had specifically included them in the dowry list from the Empire, he hoped to receive an official letter from the Emperor saying that there had been a mistake. But he could not even think that Charlotte and Lentia would wear them so brazenly for the holiday. He didn't think Abella would go to the tea party after all. She replied that no one would have thought of that. Betty was pinning the pins into the mistress's dress. She accidentally pricked her and apologized for it. The girl explained that she tried to fix her skirt, but her hands were shaking. Abella asked the maid to relax. She doesn't blame her for this. Betty exclaimed that everything was ready. They were done with that. After she fixed her skirt, she asked her to sit down at the table that was in front of them. Suddenly, a boy approached them and said that a letter had arrived from His Highness the Emperor. What does he mean? Is Felicius really saying that the Emperor knows that he has no burns? Nine years ago, Charlotte killed the Emperor's noble wife, Rosilla, his mother, and also the mothers of the seventh and ninth princes. That's when he turned to the Emperor and made a deal with him. He asked him for strength. We are talking about Madame Charlotte, whom the girl met at the Empress's tea party. Is this true? The boy replied that it was true. She killed his mother. For the other princes in the imperial palace, she is also an enemy, and it was she who laid the foundation for what he is doing now. Abella Bliss de Delure, Eighth Princess Consort. The verdict was that she had harmed two members of the imperial family on the 7th of March in the year 250th of the empirical calendar. By the will of the victims, and in accordance with the traditions of the imperial family, the guy continued to read the verdict. Abella, the eighth princess consort, will be tried for the crime of causing harm to a member of the imperial family. He will punish her, no matter what. Betty began to sweat when she heard about the trial. She exclaimed that this could not be. This couldn't happen. The proposal to keep the accused locked up for attempted murder will be withdrawn due to the conclusion of the imperial doctor that the harm caused does not threaten the life and health of the victims. Thus, Abella Bliss de Delure is released from custody and has the right to remain at her place of residence until the trial, which was quite expected. The guy visited the emperor and made a deal with him. He asked for strength. He made a deal with him nine years ago, after Charlotte, after killing his mother, also destroyed the mother of the seventh and ninth princes, imperial noble consort Rosilla, Sixteen years ago, his mother was killed in her own palace when Charlotte set it on fire. The reason why the place he lives in is red. It became known as the Red Palace. Lies in this incident. Although he acts as if he values Charlotte more than anyone else, he has never paid an iota of attention to her son, the third prince. The reason was that the prince was not like him, and this began to drive Charlotte crazy. She also heard Lentia and Shira, say that the wife of the late crown prince suspected Charlotte of murdering her husband. Whenever Charlotte notices the resemblance of one of the princes to the emperor, 
She provokes, suspects, and is jealous of that person. This is the truth, the truth. They are the ones who killed the crown prince and his brother Gamow. Abella found this family to be completely abnormal. The boy explained that if they were now mocking Gamow's death, he bet they were also mocking him and his dead mother. Abella, holding her chin in her hand, thought that this all seemed like a vicious circle. But the behavior of the emperor in this situation is quite interesting. It was almost morning. Felicius did not want to leave her alone, but he had to leave before the sun rose. Abella asked if these were the reasons why he wore bandages on his face and pretended to be sick. The girl exclaimed that it was still dark outside and asked him to tell him more. He said that the palace stopped supporting him. Therefore, he must make sure that he is not being followed. There is a group of mercenaries working alongside the Imperial Knights. He joined them to learn how to fight, survive, and make money. Abella asked if he learned this from the mercenary group. Felicius explained that there were all sorts of people there. There are even those who renovated his part of the palace. He received permission from the emperor to launch carriages at night, and then asked them to remodel the palace while she slept. The girl asked if it was really possible to rebuild the palace at night. Felicius asked her if she had ever been to the far side of the estate. He talked about the garden. Abella replied that she had already been there. It was very beautiful there. That seemed to be the end of it all. They can simply say goodbye and leave peacefully. This was the second message from His Majesty the Emperor. But there is one more thing. Year 250th of the Empirical Calendar. The Empire received diplomatic letters from the feudal district of Delure. One of them congratulates the eighth princess on her marriage and reports the theft of her property. A list of her assets and relevant confirmation were enclosed with the letter. The Empire promises to immediately solve the problem and hope to prove its unwavering desire to maintain contact with the feudal district of Delure. As an apology to the victims of the described incident, 15 servants, including a secretary, a chambermaid, and a cook, will be sent to the eighth princess consort. Betty exclaimed that she was right. Does the lady remember what she said? The Duke is looking after her. Abella replied that let's say she was right, and the Duke really was looking after her. If the duchy filed an official statement about the theft of her property, and the Empire sends her servants as an apology, that's why they couldn't give them any clue. Betty asked what difference it made. The main thing is that the duchy did not remain on the sidelines. Abella exclaimed that of course there is a difference. And holding her head in her hands, she wondered why she thought completely differently. The duchy was not supposed to help. Because of this, all her hopes of escaping from this madhouse collapsed. Betty asked what happened to the mistress. Maybe she doesn't like her hairstyle. She could have just told her about it. The maid promised to change everything right away. Abella noticed that things were definitely getting too confusing. Life was divided into before and after. Then she suddenly became Abella. She moved from the county to the empire, then went to prison, and then returned to the palace. Why is this all happening to her? But at least she understood Felicia's motives. It's worth postponing her escape for now. Betty said that she was very glad that the lady was released from custody. And not only this. They now have her property, a budget, and lots and lots of food. And now she has even more servants working for her. Betty told her mistress that she would most likely be appointed head servant. She thinks they have no choice. She may be from the duchy, but here, in the eighth prince's estate, she is the highest-ranking maid. And most importantly, no one will be able to care for her the way it is done on. Abella ran up to the girl and hugged her. She began to congratulate Betty, but maid Seth and Judy, the pantry maids, could be a problem. Setha wants to be a housekeeper, and Judy wants to be a dressmaker, so she told them they could take those positions. But Betty asked the lady not to worry, not everything is so bad. Although she still has to go through this whole legal process, it was not easy to gather the entire imperial family in one place at the same time. It will also take about two months to give her a court verdict, and they want to convict her of attempted murder because she grabbed her hair. Is this really all serious? The Empress told Her Highness that she hoped that the act she had committed would give them enough grounds to file a claim against the duchy. And if they play their cards right, it should give the Empire a big advantage. Just one disappointment. Does Charlotte really count on this? The man asked if she was serious about this at all. The Emperor never directly reproaches her, even when she draws the wrong conclusions. He's just saying, you can think about it. Why did he act strange yesterday? In addition, he also mocked her. 
She never showed any interest in this girl because she is too stupid. She thought that people would hardly treat her like a human being, but it seems her intuition let her down. How the duchy realized that Abella arranged all this because of stolen jewelry. Maybe the duchy isn't as powerless as Betty thinks. If they can send a formal letter regarding marriage, then the duchy can be as powerful as the empire. I wonder how much the duchy actually knows and how friendly it is to Abella. Maybe she's just a pawn in a diplomatic game, or she is the favorite daughter of the Archduke and the Duchy. She can't stop thinking about it because everything is so complicated. Betty understood the lady. She thinks she has the win again this round. The Art of War says that the most insidious enemy is the one they don't know about. For Betty, the county is her home, but for her, it is still full of secrets. The girl realized that the mistress did not quite understand the game. She uses the simplest moves, and therefore she must be more careful towards them even if they are on her side. It will be much easier for her to notice moves if she begins to understand them. Betty thinks she needs to study a little. Abella exclaimed that she was right. She really needs to learn. She said that she needed to go to the library. Betty asked what the lady meant by library. Maybe she means the Imperial Library of the Kaislin Empire. Abella said that it was so. She wants to read a little in the library because she has a hard time understanding the customs and culture of the place through trial and error. Abella wants to find out how society works here, and how it works, whether it works well. Betty replied that the library was in the main building of the palace. Therefore, entering and exiting it is not so easy. Besides, the library is the last place she should be seen. Why doesn't she go to the library and borrow a book instead? Just let him give her a list of books, and she will lend them under the name of the eighth prince of the estate. Abella asked how she could write a list of books if she didn't know what there were. She also doesn't know what books are there. The lady told the girl that she understood that they were asking a lot. She also realizes that she is causing some problems here, but it's still better for her to go there herself, so as not to endanger her mistress. Betty realized that she couldn't stop her if she really wanted to go to the library, but she can't just walk around like that. She needs to disguise herself, why is she looking at her like that? They also have a wig prepared for the banquet. Betty said that she was just joking then. The girl knows what a joke is. Abella asked if she also had the documents of the new maids. Betty replied that there was. At this time, in a huge room, the guy asked what they were going to do with all this. He wrote down that the maid's name was Rita Pixis. And as he understands, she works here temporarily. The girl replied that it was so. She was ready to fulfill her duties. He noticed that they sent it quickly. Two months ago, when he requested three maids to sweep away the dust in this place, they did not send anyone. Rita was given the command to clean the zero and second sections. The girl promised to try her best. She exclaimed that it was wonderful. Listen, the governess thought that she was lucky that there was no one around here. She doesn't know in what order the books are arranged here. Well, if there is no difference with the model of sorting books in the modern world, then dictionaries and encyclopedias should be here somewhere. The girl reached towards some book with a bright red wrapper, an ancient magic lost due to the dragon's curse. A very interesting title. Magic refers to supernatural phenomena that cannot occur in nature on their own. This is one of the healthy gifts presented by the sacred dragon of Kaislan. Kaslan endowed every egret descendant with the ability to sense mana on the continent. This means that a small group of aristocrats in the empire could become sorcerers. But Kaslan was so enraged by the insane amount of war, conducted with the aim of seizing other lands, what destroyed the Domina school, which was engaged in the study and teaching of magic. So, only the simplest spells remained, making the commercialization of magic impossible. Soon, the only way to use magic was a stone that collected mana, or reproducing spells on artifacts with its help. Felicius also said something like that. He said that the emperor's passion for territorial warriors angered the imperial dragon Kaislan. So, does this mean that the dragon, out of anger, cast a curse that neutralizes the magic of this land? But Betty used a silver spoon artifact, so magic must still remain in this world. Abella said that the strength and range of the spell is determined by the number drawn in the center of the magic circle, when two hands coming from the outer points clasp her and open their mouths at each other. A harmonious scheme is created. Where then in this case does the flame begin? Wait a minute. Why does this all look so familiar to her? External point, say point P. For now, you can mark it anywhere outside this circle. 
If she draws two lines crossing the circle through other lines, it will work. The result will most likely be a harmonic quadrilateral. It is assumed that this is the magic circle of fire, but inside the circle, there is simply a harmonic quadrilateral. There were many different figures in the circle, helping to form fire of varying strength and range of application, but the plans were lost. All lost magic circles are made in similar ways. Essentially, these are simple mathematical equations expressed in terms of shapes. Perhaps she can restore all the magic circles. Abella was so passionate about her new occupation. Betty turned to Mrs. She explained that she had no idea what she was doing here. Well, they were asking her to eat. Abella replied that she would eat it in the morning. If you eat this at night, she may gain a couple of extra pounds. Then, Betty suggested that she eat it already. Because it's morning now. The girl was so busy that she didn't even notice how the night passed. The lady lowered her head to the deer. Betty asked what kind of book it was. Did the lady borrow it? Or maybe she stole it. She understands that she is still here on probation. Betty asked that the books be returned to their place before this was discovered. She asked whether the girl was listening to her at all or not. Abella turned away with a book in her hands and exclaimed that she was very sleepy. Since the weather was so nice, the girl decided to take a short walk outside to cheer herself up. She promised that she would go for a while. Besides, does Betty remember that they all think she's a fool? The girl promised to return before she gets into another trouble. This is definitely a geometry textbook. As long as the quadrilateral is inside the circle, it is harmonic. She could open all the magic circles of fire. Then the girl heard someone talking from the side. The ladies were talking about her. They asked to look at this crazy woman. Does she even understand where she is? What a terrible start to the day. Before they had time to go outside, they met this girl. Maybe they should go somewhere else. Her friend told her to just ignore her. It will all end as soon as the trial begins. The trial would have been held long ago if only the ninth prince could have been present. In fact, she heard that the tenth prince had decided to abstain from voting. The lady spoke to another, that he wouldn't even take his own brother's side. Shara replied that she didn't think he was worth protecting at all, and who in their right mind would want to support such a terrible monster like him? She asked Shara again if this fool would be punished. Abella thought what nonsense they were talking about. They either called Felicia a monster. If only she could teach them a lesson. She can't just beat them up like last time. How she would like a light to flash on her pretentious and ugly hairstyle. When this girl said this, the lady's head immediately lit up. Everyone around started screaming. The princess's hair burned with a bright flame. She immediately grabbed her head. This is some kind of joke. She asked her friend to say that it was so. How could this even happen? Abella didn't think she had just done that. Another girl shouted that the princess's hair was on fire and asked them to help. Then she decided to help the princess, and she said that she would put it out now. She raised her foot and began to extinguish her head with her heel. The girl began to scream even louder and ask what she was doing. The video explained that she was putting out a fire on her head. Spontaneous combustion is terrible. Ibella thought that the fourth princess's hair ornament had suddenly caught fire. She thinks hair ornaments and wigs will be out of imperial fashion for a long time. They immediately canceled all their orders for tall wigs. This is what the girl did with her spells. After the noble ladies heard what happened to Princess Lenthea's hair, it just became fashionable. This news will greatly upset all wig manufacturers. Abella wondered if wigs were even a trend. How could such a thing even become a trend? Betty replied that the ladies of the imperial family set fashion trends. That is why jewelers and wig makers use their connections to supply new products to the imperial family. Abella asked where she even gets such information from. The imperial family publishes official newsletters. She doesn't miss a single one to always be up to date. The girl asked when she would be invited to court. Betty answered her mistress that she did not know. They said that the entire imperial family should gather. She can't even imagine how long it will take. But she heard that the trial was delayed due to the Ninth Prince's busy schedule. He holds the position of professor at the academy. Abella immediately turned around when Betty said about the Ninth Prince. She thinks the White Palace will send a messenger as soon as everyone is free. She said, Come on, they would have held the trial a long time ago. Wait, if the Ninth Prince had been present, this drives her crazy. What was she just talking about? She said she would be doomed once the trial began. Is it so? Stupid, stupid Lentia. 
Has anyone ever taught her manners? If she does it again, she will say something like that to her face. Betty asked her mistress if she was okay. What was it now? Spontaneous combustion again, which is what they are talking about now. Abella replied that most likely it was. She needs to practice. Let him just look at her. Let him look at her hair. The princess, whose hair was burned, asked, Is she really laughing for days? The woman laughed and explained that she could not help herself. It was all her fault that her burnt hair was to blame. The girl asked your mother if she knew how humiliated she felt. Abella, that crazy girl, laughed at her. She asked her mother how she could be so calm when her daughter was humiliated like that. They set her hair on fire. The mother said that it so happened that she was already very lenient towards her and the third prince, even when she stole Abella's jewelry, or she squandered the private funds of the imperial palace. She closed her eyes to this. Why is she talking about this now? So she asked me to just calm down and listen to her. She began to explain that if Abella were her daughter, she would lock her in a secret room and raise her like an animal. And then I would kill her. I would give her poison. She would do this even if she suffered. I did her. She wouldn't be sorry because she's a weak dumbass who doesn't make sense. Therefore, the woman asked not to test her patience. Before you open your mouth next time, you need to think about who she is talking to. If she talks like a dumbass again, just like she did now, she will decide that her daughter is no different from Abella and wonder if her girlfriend understood. Lentia replied that she understood. The mother said that now she needs to deal with the costs of the trial, in the case of the imperial family, instead of the emperor. The girl told her mother that she would send her the funds. She is confident that the woman will win the trial, and thanked her mother. The woman said that there was nothing to thank her for. These are her direct responsibilities as a mother. A few days ago, the maid Rita stood with a broom in the middle of the room. During this time, Abella practiced every day, but her abilities did not improve as she expected. This time, she'd better steal research materials from magic circles. The man shouted to the maid. She immediately turned around and approached him. The owner asked to clean the place properly. After all, the library is still not cleaned. She had to dust the shelves in every corner. The girl had not yet removed the top row of books. This time, she must wipe down all the bookshelves in the library.